Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Sisters Talk TV. My name is Lucy and I am one half of Sisters Talk TV. Before we begin, please do like subscribe and that will be that red subscribe button on your right and of course follow us on instagram and twitter at sisters talk tv all right so you all know um why we're here we're here of course to review the real housewives of atlanta and just some updates before we do get started into the new episode now on the past few episodes um we get into of course the stripper gate Though all the ladies went to Cynthia's uh, celebrate Cynthia's bachelorette party hosted by Kenya, and you know there were some moments where um, the ladies um, we started off with Latoya and Drew they had their moments, and then we also had Marlo and Kenya hash out their issues there in South Carolina, and we also had um, the stripper gate scandal where. Um, the ladies were alleged um, sleeping with strippers, allegedly sleep, sleeping with a stripper named Bolo. And that's just been the, sort of like the hot topic since. So we fast forward into sort of moving into Cynthia's wedding. And um, so we have Cynthia in this new episode. We have Cynthia and she's um, getting getting a massage and prepping for her big day, which is 10 10. And supposedly there's supposed to be a hurricane in Atlanta, which I don't think that Atlanta ever had a hurricane, but as alleged, but supposedly there's supposed to be a hurricane coming in. And then we get to a scene where also Portia and Lauren are just kind of talking and she's kind of letting Lauren know that basically if she sees if nothing's going to stop her from coming to Cynthia's wedding, even if her ex is going to be there. And I believe that she's probably referring to Dennis. And she's like, I don't, you know, I don't care. I'm still going to look good. And I'm still going to show up to the wedding. And of course, I know that Portia's going to show up regardless. And I personally feel like she wants Dennis to be there. She wants to dress to impress to see Dennis. So I think that's what that is all about. So we're at Cynthia's rehearsal and Cynthia's a little bit concerned because of course about the hurricane and she's also concerned about the restrictions to the C-19 and just worried about the people that are just the overall, um, how they're going to face, um, especially with the many people they have invited and of course all the safety regulations and then just how they were able to maneuver through throughout all this especially with the i believe the 200 something 90 guests that they the 200 uh, something um numbers of um, attendees that they've invited so she's a little bit worried about that and supposedly cynthia has peace order for her guests at the rehearsal party and we see the ladies coming in some of her bridesmaids we see eva and we see Candy, and we also see Cynthia, I'm sorry, Kenya coming in. And of course, they're the bridesmaids, so they're there. And Cynthia basically, basically lets the ladies know about, again, the some of the troubles that are kind of like coming by, especially with a C-19 going on. And she's just basically telling them about the wedding and how she's getting backlash, especially from Wendy Williams, because... You know, again, it's C-19 and there's supposed to be a super spreader for her wedding. And I'm just kind of like, well, yeah, Cynthia, you are going to be getting a, a backlash because, again, this is the the C-19 is still going on. And, you know, this is a, this is a time where everyone's supposed to be quarantined. But however, you're still going through with your wedding and you're, it's not like you're even inviting just a couple people. You're having so many guests. So, of course, you're going to get a lot of backlash. That's just the norm. So, she's just a little concerned about that. And, you know, she's watching the news and just all the stuff that people are saying, all the negative talk that people are saying. And which is not surprising. Again, this is it's a hot topic. I mean, who has, who, you know, during this time of the, during the time when the, the pandemic or the virus was at its peak, you were having this, you were, you know, prepping for your wedding. And it's not like you had, it's not like you said that you, you know, will postpone the wedding, but you still wanted to have the wedding. So that was, of course, a big concern. Even when we'll discuss it. All right. So Candy and, of course, Mel arrives, Cynthia's sister arrives, and Kenya 
finds it in her somehow talk to Candy and she's basically talking still talking about stripper gate and um, how she wants to tell the truth because she feels like she doesn't want Portia to make her seem like she's lying and overall just dis discredit her so she feels like she needs to let everyone know you know what really happened at the um, at Cynthia's uh, bachelorette party and so we move to the news to the scene of Portia, Drew, Cynthia, and Shania. They're basically at, at a get together, kind of like a girls night out. And I did say Latoya was there also. So basically, Marlo lets because obviously this has been bothering Portia regarding Marlo and Kenya getting back together. You know, talking over through their issues and you know, getting back in a good standing terms so this has been bothering Portia of course it's bothering Portia so Marlo lets Portia you know let them know that no one is going to control who she's friends with um which is true because when Nene and Portia reconciled didn't they tell people that they didn't need to know what they discussed um didn't Portia didn't really tell the group the ladies what her and her, her and Nene discussed when they were in Greece so why is it so important that people should control what Marlo, who Marlo talks to, or whether or not what her stance is with with her and Kenya and her, their relationship? So I, I agree with Marlo. It's no one's business, and no one could control who she talks, who she's friends with. Just like the same thing when Phaedra was on a show, uh, Portia had her way with Phaedra as well. No one told her of who she could not or not talk to. So I think that it's, again, it's no one's business, but Marlo, how she wants to move through the next phase with Kenya. So, and she's just saying that she's working on her relationship with Kenya. I think that, you know, at this point, I think that Marlo probably knows better. She probably gets the idea of who Kenya is. You know, as long as they have a good standing or a good understanding, um, I think that's all that matters. Hopefully we'll be able to see the relationship blossom and we'll definitely see what we can get out of this. At this point, I don't really know to the point of, you know, whether this relationship will last or if it's just because Nini is not here. But you never know. You can never know with um, Kenya. But however, I do think that Kenya really did pour her heart out to Marlo on why, why their relationship was like that before. You know, she told her it was just the way she was regarding the comments she made about her mom and just all the side stuff that she would say about her. So Kenya did really pour her heart out, especially her vulnerable moment, the vulnerable moment, like what she's going through with Mark and just everything else she's been going through. So she was still able to let Marlo know, like, this is why um, I treat you this way. This is why I can never be in a good standing position with you, especially when we come face to face. So now Latoya basically, for some reason, Latoya finds it in her way to tell the girls that B. Scott was the one that posted about Bolo and she let them know that Kenya leaked the story. So at this point, I'm thinking like no one asked you, Latoya. No one really asked you about your opinion. No one asked you about, you know, who leaked the, who leaked the story. You decided that you wanted to let the, let the ladies know who leaked the story. And supposedly Kenya is supposed to be your friend. So it's like, why are you backstabbing Kenya? Like, why? Kenya didn't give you a reason to go behind her back and basically say that. And of course, we know that Kenya and B. Scott are really good friends. But however, that still, that, I mean, I could say that it, could, it possibly is true. Because Kenya said she, again, she said that she's not going to let Portia discredit her and again her and B Scott are friends at the same time it could be someone else who leaked that who leaked the story within the group so it may not have been Kenya so Drew also reminds her and that the comment that she made when they were on the table was uncalled for and she basically told her don't ever say that you know don't ever say that about me or my family and it kind of all backfired on Latoya because she felt like she was she was trying to, you know, see where she can get at with the girls. Like, let's say if she talked about Kenya, she was probably going to see what the what the ladies were going to say about Kenya because you know, 
Drew and Kenya have their share fair um, with some exchange of words. So has Portia with Kenya. She knows where the lady stands with Kenya. So it's so interesting that she's supposed to be Kenya's friend. However, she's talking about, discussing about Kenya's personal um, problems, her, mar her, mar her marriage affairs with the ladies that does not get along with Kenya. So, however, again, this all backfired because Portia told her and they all told her, hey, you know, you shouldn't be sharing, dish not your friends, personal problems or whatever she's going through and sharing it with us. It's not right. And that, you know, Kenya wouldn't like it if you're, if she's here, she wouldn't like it that you're doing this to her. So I felt like at this point, Latoya probably, of course, feels embarrassed because I would feel embarrassed if I'm trying to kind of see maybe join the group or maybe see what the girls are saying about Kenya or you know just see if the girls will also talk bad about Kenya with her so it, it all backfired because it's it's funny because Portia out of everybody was defending Kenya so maybe this was just a strategy that Portia's like no I'm not getting into this I'm not about to feed into this BS and I'm just gonna let you know how it is there. So this kind of shows you who Latoya is. It's just funny acting person. Um, King is supposed to be your this your, this friend that you have on the show, but however you want to tell the ladies, people, women that she's not even in good terms with, you want to share her personal information and stuff that she's going through with them, wow. That's all I have to say about that. But I'm really glad, glad that Drew did get did get her together, and and because she really did feel embarrassed, and I feel like that's how you should that's how she should feel in that moment because what she did was just real foul. So I'm just going to leave that leave that there at this point. Latoya is just a no no. She she comes off as a very dishonest, sneaky, and not really a reliable person. So we're moving on to 1010, which is Cynthia's big day, and she, of course, lets her uh, lets us know, and of course, her mom that she invited her dad. But I don't think that her dad showed up. But I may be wrong. But she did say that she invited her dad over. Her mom basically like, you know, I'm just happy. You know what you want to do. I'm happy. You know, I'm happy for you. Um, you make the decision that you want to make, and. You know, it was just really good to see them, you know, back at that point where they can actually discuss uh, Cynthia's father. Um, so we see everyone, everyone's getting ready. All the bridesmaids, Cynthia, they're all getting their professional makeup done. And of course, the producers let us, let us know that they're um, due to COVID C-19 restrictions, that they will not um, be able to film basically Cynthia's wedding. I believe they show up, I believe 10 minutes of the wedding. So that was basically it. And regarding the hurricane, there was no hurricane. No hurricane happened, none of that happened. Um, so I don't really know where that was coming from earlier. So now apparently Drew was also supposed to sing at the wedding, but however, she called Cynthia, let her know that she was not she was not able to, of course, come to come and sing. But however, they will be there. Um, I think she lost her voice, so she wasn't able to sing. And I thought that Drew was an actress. She she's an actress. I didn't know she also sang as well. And if she did come to Cynthia's wedding to sing, that would be kind of interesting because um, I've really never knew Drew as a singer so yeah and I'm just also thinking why would Cynthia out of all it everyone she could invite why would she invite Drew to sing at her wedding but then I do I do get it as well you know that's that's a part of her that's a cast member so it's like you know having her there possibly showcase her talent you know so the work could just be a big step for Drew all right, so Cynthia, of course, looks stunning. I love Cynthia's dress. Um, I love her veil. 
I just love the whole shimmery um, look. I think she looked absolutely stunning. Absolutely, absolutely stunning. And, you know, she kind of reflects about the, this step that she's taken with Mike compared to when she was with Peter. You know, she just feels less, like, less anxious. Um, she just feels that like she's making the right decision because when she was Peter, even at the, at the wedding day, um, she was still feeling like, you know, she didn't want to take this next move with Peter. But however, with Mike, it's just everything just feels so right. And I mean, it's a good thought and for her to feel that way. Because like, you guys remember when her and Peter was getting married? I mean, a lot happened. I mean, they the marriage certificate, the Mel and her mom took the marriage certificate. It was just, Sippy was crying. It's just like she didn't know what she wanted to do. So at Fast forwarding to now marrying Mike Hill is so different from when she was marrying Peter. I mean, you can see the happiness now in Cynthia's face. Uh, so, Portia, we also see Portia. Portia looks absolutely stunning as well. And, she, you know, she has this black pretty dress on, very couture. Um, her makeup looks good. Her hair looks good. Just very, very beautiful. And uh, we, I believe I see Marlo, Charade, I, I believe I said Charade, Shania, um, they were also there at the wedding. And of course everyone had their, what is this, the shield on, not really a mask, but they had their shield on. And um, so apparently Drew also reveals that when she got, when she got, because just kind of seeing Mike and Cynthia when her and Ralph got married, they didn't really get married. Like they didn't have a big wedding. And which was nice to know because it seems like she does want to do something big. Like have, you know, like a, the white wedding, just have that theme going on. But unfortunately when she wedded, it was just her and her family, which is interesting because it's like, it, I don't know, it's just, it just kind of dives into, um, just reflecting on her and her Raph's relationship and just how, how they've come, not knowing that they didn't really actually do a wedding, wedding, wedding. It, it was just something quick. So it's just, it seems like she's just reflecting on that and she really wants to have, have that white wedding. But we'll see. All right, so the last scene was basically Cynthia, um, Portia and Dennis. They're basically at a dinner and they're talking. And it's just because, of course, before the day of the, the, day of the wedding, uh, Portia finds out that Dennis said he was single. And I guess it's because of the news regarding what happened in Charlotte, when they went to Charlotte, North Carolina to celebrate Cynthia's bachelor party. Dennis possibly heard what happened and that's why he said that he was single so Portia was a little concerned and she felt like you know they they need to really seriously have a talk because she's just tired of going back and forth and at this moment in this conversation that Portia and Dennis are having I feel like they're really not getting anywhere because I felt there's just there's they both have well let me just say Dennis there's like a a hole like he's like has a shield and it seems like then I feel like he seems like he doesn't care and I just feel like he just feels like he just doesn't want to have the conversation and all Portia wants to do is just have their communication improve and she really doesn't want to be at this point with him especially that they have a child together and she wants of course Dennis to always have be with Pilar like they want them to still co-parent and you know just have that relationship and bonding where he can still have a bond with Pilar so I think that's just Portia's whole main her whole argument but then again the way she talks about Dennis it seems like she really wants to be with Dennis just by the stuff that she says and by the stuff that she does so that's what I think I think that you know Portia really sees it for Dennis I don't really as far as Dennis I don't really know much I just feel like he's just like whatever like it is what it is so that's why that's what I see and I'm just gonna leave it at that but so far I hope you guys really enjoyed the review drop your comments 
And also let us know what you think if you really enjoyed the show or if you felt like, you know, you really didn't care much. And yeah, so again, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sisters Talk TV. And also don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe and really appreciate it. Until next time, peace, love, and blessings.